Deb Antonick and welcome to another uh, month of actually the first month of the officially of my outside the box column for the pixelated palette and what we're going to do this time is we're going to do uh, image transfer reverse image transfer so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a coaster set and this is a coaster set from Patricia Rollins's creative arts lifestyle and it was something that I had that I sort of started to paint and I wasn't really happy with it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make them all shabby. We're going to do a shabby chic technique and we are going to um, do image transfers on all the coasters. And because the feature of the column really is to focus on the different products that we have and how to use them. But I still want to create sort of a fun little project with each, um, each month that I do. So in this particular case, I've gone into my bin of things that I just never really struck me, something that I really didn't know what to do with. And one of the best things when DecoArt came out with the, um, of course, the, the, the mixed media or the, uh, the, um, when DecoArt came out with the, uh, the Chucky Finish paints, one of the fun things was is you could go into some of these, these, you know, projects that we've had or pieces that we don't really know what to do with and sort of play with them and just kind of create something functional. So today what we're going to do is we're going to paint them with just a, a basic lamp black to start with and then we're going to use um, Chalky Finish Decor's Whisper and of course in my case I'm going to use the little two ounce bottles because I just like them so much better. And I'm starting with just regular Decor's Lamp Black and we're going to use the uh, Decoupage Photo Medium Transfer. Um, I like this one better. You can actually use um, the Deco Arts Deco Page. You can use that for your uh, image transfers as well. I'm particularly fond of this one. I just like the way the finish works. So I'm going to use that one today. And we're going to start by base coating all these. So I started with them with Lamp Black. And I'm just going to finish them up because they have another color. I'm using this awesome little sort of sponge pouncer thing from Deco Art. It's great for getting a thin coat of paint on because I already sort of started painting them, so I'm just going to throw a quick coat on. And I like it just gets a nice thin coat on, especially these because I've got all these little grooves and things like that that I want to uh, not get too much paint in so that this piece goes back together the way it should. It just paints up so quickly. Nice and smooth. Check the back sides. Paint these guys all up. And look how quickly that paints. No brush strokes. And it doesn't need to be a really good coat because I'm just basically giving it a base so that when I do do a little bit of the rub back technique on the chalk finish paint that it will just show a little bit of the black through. Let's see. Paint it. So those are base coat and I'm just going to throw this in the water because I don't need it anymore. And I just wash it out with soap and water. And then what I'm going to do, because when I rub back with a damp cloth and to take off the chalk finish paint to sort of give it that little um, rustic look, shabby chic look, is I don't want to rub off any of the black paint. Um, so what I'm going to do is before I go ahead and put my coat on, I'm actually going to throw a quick coat of Decor's all-purpose sealer. Just a thin coat over top of all the pieces. And then I'm going to let that dry. And that's going to give me a, a base for putting the, um, the chalk finish paint over and then having it, it uh, easy to rub off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and we'll come back to the video um, when I've finished it. So I've got the first coat on and I'm just using a, an old brush. This is one of my Black Soul. It's another Dynasty Black Silver brush. Just I like to use these for... for um, my messy stuff. So you can always tell because it's a little bit shiny but when you're base coating just make sure that you don't get um, any of the mediums back in, in the little center bits here because it'll make it a little bit difficult to get the pieces together. And you can tell what you've painted because it is a little bit shiny. So you just want to watch for your drips. Just a thin coat. If you miss a spot it's not that big a deal. Especially, you know, this is a great idea, especially if you tend to, you know, leave your chalk finish paint on just a little bit longer than you had anticipated. You're going to rub harder to get some of the paint off. So this will um, 
sort of protect the undercoat because otherwise you could rub right through to the raw wood. Okay, so they're all dry, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the um, with Whisper chalky finish paint and I'm just going to base coat each piece with a light coat because I don't want it on really thick and the only reason I don't want it on really thick is because I don't want the grooves to fill in. So what I'm going to do is use one of my, these are the Eye of the Tiger brushes and I use them all the time with the chalk finish paint primarily just because they're, they're soft enough to work but firm enough to move the paint without taking it off puts a nice coat on. But because I'm using a lighter color, I don't want to have um, a thick coat of paint. So we'll do two coats. Okay, that was fun. That's the first coat. And the reason I, you know, I know it looks really bad because with the first coat, but you can typically do it in one coat with, of course, you know, the really good quality brushes with the, uh, where's my favorite? You know, if you're painting furniture and stuff, these, these um, blue eyes brushes. You can actually typically put a coat of Whisper over top of the black with one coat. But because it's, it's a, this is a, a you know, a, a painting project, a decorative painting project, as opposed to like a big piece of furniture. I wanted to keep a thin coat on here so that I wouldn't end up with with um, a bunch of pieces that, you know, chunks that are drying and stuff like that. So we're going to just do this, and now I'm going to go ahead. It's dry enough, and I'm going to put a second coat on. The second coat is the finished coat. That's the one we're going to leave. So once again, I'm going to fast forward through this, and we are going to uh, put the second coat on. Okay, so they're all dry. Got two coats on. So what you do next is you dry to the touch. I don't. I didn't want to let them dry like a whole bunch for a long period of time because the hard longer they dry, the harder it is to get the paint off. And I just want to make sure, like I went through and I looked where, so I might have some little bits of paint tucked in to a little groove or something. I would just take it out with my stylus just in case. Always a spot or two. So then what we do is we're going to go get an old rag and I, I just got wet it with, with uh, warm water. Not hot water and not cold water but warm water. And then I wring it out so it's wet but it's not. It's just damp, right? So then what I'll do 
just put my fingers in there like so. And I'll start with a piece that I'm not too sure, like this is a base piece. And I'm just going to start rubbing the corners. And you'll start to get like that look where it starts to take the edges off. So I'll go around the outside. I don't want to do a bunch in the middle. And this is the base, so I'm not too worried about this piece. And I just rub. And I don't want it to be like totally perfect, so I'm just basically going around the edge. And I'll turn it over. And just go around it. This is the base, so I don't want it to just a little bit distressed around the outside. And because it's only dried to the touch, it's it's easy to come off. If it had dried overnight or something, you could still do this. You just have to scrub a little bit harder. And that's why I put the um, the all-purpose sealer down. And I just go around the sides a little bit too, just to distress. So fun. So that, that's the base, that's done. I'm gonna put that aside. This is also another part of the base. So I'm just gonna go around the sides, the edges as well. And I don't need to do the bottom because that's actually gonna get glued down. So I just wanna go around the outside. And this is also going to be hidden. And you can distress more or less than you like. If you want more distressing, then you can distress more. It also helps to smooth it out if you've had little drips around the edges or anything. See how pretty that is? Now will just go around the outside a little bit. Yeah. So I'll put that one aside. That's done. This is the back. So I want to kind of get some little edges showing around through in here. So I'm going to scrub in there. But I'm going to start off gently like with my finger so that I don't take like all the paint off. And you know, look for a clean spot. And then of course do the edges. And you can see too, like I've got paint in here. So I'm just going to make sure I take that out so it doesn't dry. Along the bottom, a little bit. And this back part is hidden for the most part too, but you just need to do up here. The way you rub is the way that you'll distress. Because this is hidden, if we were to rub this way, we'll leave a spot like that. So that's hidden, so we're not going to worry about it. The same as if you went this way, you get a little bit more of a distressed look. So it's all in the, in the direction that you go to. That's the back side. That's like the behind. You 
should do it. So when we base coated and did my second coats, I did go through and make sure that all my sides were done, all my backs were done, both sides. Then we pick the best side, it's the one that we're going to put the image transfer on. And then, worst case scenario, if the image transfer doesn't turn out, we can turn the piece around. And do the other side and then just paint over what didn't work, so. It's almost fault proof. There's always one out of four that's not going to work, it never fails. So that's done. How cool is that? So nice and rustic looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to let these dry. Dry for a few minutes and while it's doing that what we're going to do is talk about the reverse image transfer. The reverse image transfer is kind of fun. I'm going to use these images that I got from the uh, Graphics Fairy. She has on her website basically royalty free, free images. So you always want to be careful when you're taking images of course off the internet as to the rights and things like that. So these are, are um, free for us to use. So I will have the link for you to download these. They're French Parisian, they're really fun. And uh, But you can use anything if you've got any images that you specifically want to use you can get free ones off the offline the key thing though when you when you print them off you need to print them off on a laser printer as opposed to a uh, an inkjet the inkjet printers will not create a printout that can be used for the reverse image trend. It's just plain will not work um, something about the ink that's used so it has to be in a laser jet printer and it also has to be if there's any text involved it has to be a mirror image so if you look on these you can see they are backwards because that's the important thing because of course they are going to be going this way on our project so that we'll put them right side out so they're mirror mirror images of each other if you don't know how to do it and you don't have a laser printer all you need to do is just print them off regular there this option this link actually does have a, an option to print it in reverse format so there's there's two downloads there's the download for the the regular and there's download for the reversed print it off on your regular inkjet printer and then take it to staples or or wherever it is that you can get your copies made and they'll make a copy for you on the uh, laser jet printer so it's, it's quite easy to get those copies and so what we want to do is I have no idea what they say but I like them and they're pretty there's six on this page they're free and what we're going to do is we're going to cut them out with the, my paper scissors and we want to cut them out as close to the edges of course without cutting out the pieces because any of the piece, anything in the, in the reverse image transfer that is done on white will not transfer the only thing that's going to transfer is the black so we want to eliminate as much of this as possible that's less stuff that we have to try to try to uh, get off so there's the first one so I'm going to go ahead and cut out five of these. That's what we're doing while our paint is drying. Because of course the, the, the rags were stamped, so which means the surfaces are now damp. And you also want to use the cheapest paper possible. 
you don't want really good quality paper. So cheaper the better, thinner the better. This is kind of a crafty project. It's, it's you know, when we, we have so much stuff that we collect over the years. I know I have tons of stuff and, and I moved three years ago and I really discovered just how much stuff I have. I'm not gonna paint it all, but boy, I've, I've spent a lot of money on wood. And this is a great way to take something, a box or something that you have, makes a great little gift, gift box or a box to put things in, um, any number of things. You can do these, these images as large as you want and do the same image transfer process. See, I don't know which one I want to use on the front. Whatever fits, I guess. Mm -hmm. It doesn't fit. So what I'm gonna do on the front piece is I'm just going to cut these scrolly bits off. Oh yeah, let's see. I think I'll use the cafe one. In the front, and I'll cut, and I'll cut the scroll off. I have no idea what it says. It's kind of fun. So what I'll do is cut around the text. gonna do I'm gonna put that because we don't need it in this put the sides away and we are going to do our image transfer so I take one of my my handy little I call these my crafty brushes but they're just so good they're so cheap and they just wash like crazy and I don't worry about them and they do everything exactly the right way so your image transfer medium. And one thing that's very important too is you don't want image transfer medium on the paper, like on the top of the paper. The idea is to keep it so there is none on the paper. If you get it on the paper, then it's harder to get off. So what I'm gonna do is put my medium on my, my palette. I'm going to brush a good coat on. Dries clear. So I'm not going to be too worried about what's outside of my um, my image. I'm going to plop this down where I think it's as straight as possible. It's going to start working right away. And we're just going to tap it down lightly. And then, handy dandy old credit card, these fake things that come in the mail. I like those. They're great for crafts. Old room keys, whatever. So I've got my rag handy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start and I'm going to pull. Then I'm going to wipe it off because I don't want any glue to get onto the surface, onto the paper. And this way. And then this way. Wipe it off. There. And then I'm going to sit it aside. I'm going to do the same for all of these guys. Just make sure they're right side up, of course, because they're all upside down. Don't worry if you do get some glue on there. It's, your, it's not the end of the world. There's two sides to the um, two sides to all of these pieces, so you can always change sides, repaint one. So I've got a good coat on there, but it's not like totally ridged, and you want to be as Hopefully straight. Do we really care if they're a little bit crooked? Not really. Tap it down with your finger. Avoiding, of course. Make sure this has nothing on it. And smooth. White. Smooth. White. 
and this is already working already so you can't actually once it's down there if it's not straight or whatever you really can't take it off it has to stay and you know they're 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 not going to be perfect we want them to be perfect but it doesn't mean that they will you will have some bubbles on the odd one don't worry about it you can tap it down with your finger it's already starting to work so sit it aside and I'm almost covering the whole top just so that I make sure that I get it all where it needs to be in the wood too and that will change how the image transfer takes hold so we like it to be sort of a little imperfect that's part of the whole shabby chic part and then just burnish a little bit if you want as long as you don't pick up any of the adhesive And then you notice I'm brushing both ways. That's because I want to make sure that I'm getting it into the little grooves of not only the paint, but the wood as well. Just to make sure. Because the, the decoupage medium is actually a sealer, so of course, when you think about it, if you get it on the paper, it's going to seal the paper. And then what we're going to be doing is once this paper is sat and cured and, and dried for, I'm going to give it two hours so there will be a lapse. We're going to wet it and basically disintegrate the paper and then the image will stay behind. So that's why you want to make sure you have the cheapest paper and no medium on here. And if you don't think they're, you can leave them overnight. That's not a problem. So you can leave them a lot longer. Like, you know, you can leave them. I tend to, if I'm doing a project, I will quite often just leave it overnight. That way I know that it's cured. No point in rushing it. Because if you try to take it off and it's still a bit on the wet side, you will peel the black ink off. So we're going to set them aside, all these little pieces, and we're going to let them dry. So I will be back in two to three hours to remove these. Okay, so it's been about two hours, maybe a little more. So we're going to try, what we're going to do is we're going to sample one, start with this little guy and see how it, see how it is. I'm take my little sponge, these little nylon synthetic sponges, and some warm water to wring out some. Don't want to saturate it, so I just want to get it wet. And this will actually start to tell you a little bit too once it's wet. What it's going to look like. So get a little bit wet, then take our finger and I'm just going to lightly rub. Oh, that's so cool. Oops, I'm going to zoom in. See if we can zoom in. Remember how. There. We'll work this way. 
So what I'm doing is I'm gently rubbing just to get the initial um, layer of paper off. I'm not going to rub too hard. Even though you can feel a little residue on here, you don't want to rub too hard. Not yet. Because we're going to do this in a couple of stages. Because if it starts getting too wet, you can have a tendency to lift off the black. This is good. Most of it's there. So you get a little pile of doodads here. And this is where you have to be careful. Once we start going over it, because there is a residue. So that's the first one. So let's see how the others are doing. Now sometimes, you know, I'll let this dry and then I'll go back and I'll do it again, just to double check. You can brush the paint on too, but I, I just find the sponge, I like the sponge, it works good. You can actually rub with the sponge too if you want. It actually works really good too if you want. But I like to use my fingers because I can feel it coming off. Let's see. We never actually used the sponge for the whole thing before. A little bit of texture. What I usually do is I'll take the first layer off. So I'll get most of this off. So this was good, actually, you know, to be honest, it was um, for five, I would say two and a half hours, basically, is the time that it sat. So it's cool here. It's not freezing cold, it's just basic room temperature. I don't force dry it. I know that I, I think they say you can, but I wouldn't force drying it you're just you know there's no point in it really this is something you can work at over the over a couple of days if you need be it looks so cool eh the second one I like the little finish that they get so we'll continue on I'm just going to speed up the camera for these Okay, so that's the first go around with those. And what you're going to find now as they dry, that you will see a very light, um, sort of whitish haze of paper. So this is the first one here that we had done. And it does have sort of a little haze of paper. So that's where we go back and we'll do our second go around. I'm just going to wipe the paper off with a little piece of paper towel so we can leave these dry. So what's really cool though, if you wanted to antique, then you wouldn't even notice that that little bit of paper was still on there. So I usually let them dry and then I'll do one more wipe over. The little bit of residue that's left, once I put a coat of um, a varnish over top, then it just disappears. But I'm, I'm kind of a little bit on the anal side, so I kind of like things a little bit more of a perfectionist. So I'll go back over and just, just dry. Get a little water wet it and just lightly rub at it. If you rub too hard you'll start taking and you see the black starting to come off then you have to sit it aside and let it dry and then go back to it again at a later time. Yeah. You will still see there is like a little hint of, of a line where where the actual um, just lightly around. You can see where the piece of paper was. It's very faint, but it is there. But really only you know it's there. So that. So while I let the, can the coasters dry, I'm going to put my, my little container, keep my kit together here, my little house. Let's see if we can remember how to build this.
because what I wanted to do is I wanted to decide if I wanted to use any of these little bits maybe on here somewhere so I was sort of thinking that's something we could look at build this thing the box does come with instructions so we can certainly hope for that let's go back to where we were See if we can build this baby. One. I like how how um, Patricia Rawlinson has been coming up with these little things that you build because they're they're so much easier for shipping. They're lightweight. They're easy to work with. Mm. Oh no! That's the base. This goes here. The fun part. Watch that build. Oh, okay. Goes in there. So it's all get all together now. Just a little tricky. And you can see like along here there's paint. So that's really what the problem is. So that's why I said when we start we just have to start off with a thin coat of paint. There. It's up in here. So as long as we start with a thin coat of paint, we're fine. It's just a very tight fit, so. All right, so let's finish the rest of our, uh, put the heavy tools away. I did speed through all of that and I did block out all the curse words because there was curse words. Just saying there was curse words. So these are pretty much, you know, they've got that little residue on them. So I'm just going to tidy them up a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I also gave them a little bit of a chance to dry as well. See, as soon as water hits, the paint, the paper goes away. So, just remember, don't scrub too hard. Give it a little rub with my fingers to get any excess. And you can feel it; like there's a little grits. You can feel them. And then just wipe it off. And we'll call that one done. So that'll set aside to dry. I'm gonna wet them all. And I'm just kind of going circular, so if if I start lifting anything at all, I can catch it right away. And you can feel, I could feel that there was still paper in there. You see all the little paper bits. As you're rubbing, you can see them all. They start to start to accumulate little paper bits all over. And this one, actually, you can see is it did lift a tiny bit over in this corner, but not enough. Like, it's, it's vintage, so it's, it's not enough to worry about. That was the first go around. So when I saw that it was doing that, I just kind of stayed away from that one spot. Now I'm going over it again now that it's dry. Okay. 
last one. And this one up here too, I noticed that a little bit over here was, so I'm just, you know, I'm just not going to press this hard and just let it become part of the design. Here. Did you get this nice little mess? This is a craft mat. It's a Ranger craft mat and it is awesome. I use it, paint on, and then I just wipe it down with, with, um, you know, little baby wipes that catches all my stuff and it just wipes down. It's great. I can okay. So they're dry. And this is dry. This one is, as you can see, and you really can't see much in the way of any residue left on that. So I'm calling that done. These are the same. dry it off with a clean paper towel just to take off any little bits. There. So this is a base for the whole thing. And this basically just gets glued onto this. That's a little easier than hammering it together, I think. So I'm going to use my, put this back out there. My Aileen's Tacky Glue, which I just love this stuff. It's great. Note to self, store it upside down, otherwise you'll never get glue out of it. Center. down there. These. Put that aside to dry somewhere. So with these now is we want to seal them so that they're they're protected. So what I'm going to use is um, the DecoArt Decor Ultra Matte Varnish and what that's actually going to do is not only going to seal these it is also going to eliminate the paper visual that you're seeing okay so i lied we're actually going to use the, uh, the the satin the satin i'm out of mat so we're going to use the satin and it's not going to be super shiny anyway so that's okay and i'm going to get out one of my favorite brushes give these a coat 